we have um, two things to talk about today. And then if you have any questions or um, whatever, we can um, deal with them. Uh, next week, um, there's still time to give me topics. Um, I'm okay with giving you a work day on one of those days. Um, if I don't get any more topics, I'll probably look something of my own and maybe go over an example or two um, of my own. Um, but if you guys have suggestions, please uh, make those. Uh, we can also probably talk about the final next week. Uh, my aim is to make the final um, as not intimidating as possible. I mean, the quizzes were pretty easy, I think, and the final will be like that. Um, there was, at some point, um, a discussion of having a group final. Um, I, um, I decided not to go with that. In, in other classes, um, there was another game that we did after Blackjack. Um, and I got the sense that we were a little game burned out in this class. So I, I decided not to uh, go with that one. So yeah, it'll just be a conventional final. All right. Um, as you know, the one thing that um, we can do to um, enrich our Android applications or to add additional functionality is to integrate with other stuff. In fact, I think I have an example that integrates with the camera. So we could, we could, that would be possibly, possibly one of the things that we could cover next week. Um, and the question was is to integrate with the accelerometer or the sensors. All right. The accelerometer, again, um, is a fancy word for the sensor that detects motion. So it's a motion uh, detection. And you could use this in a variety of different things. You could, for example, um, I've seen games where if you tilt it, it goes. Um, one of the really great games, I, I don't remember what platform, I don't think I played it on a mobile device with an accelerometer, but I love, for example, Super Monkey Ball. I don't know if you've ever played that, where you, you kind of have to have a ball going down a track and you have to tilt it to make the, the ball roll down the track instead of falling off. It, it's a blast. So uh, accelerometer would be like perfect for that. Um, so I, I looked up a, a, um, an application and I will post a link to it if I have not already. Um, and, and here it is. It was kind of hard to show this on the emulator, so I had to actually bring in the device. So we'll look at the device, and then we can even pass it around to uh, get a closer look, because I'm not really sure what you're going to be able to see. Well, you can see some things. Let's zoom in. Yeah, I did. I tried to run people down and I shook my fist at them. Oh, I guess we can see. Um, as you know, um, three-dimensional um, space would, the, the, you, can, you can measure things across three axes. You know, horizontal, vertical, and depth. So, um, Typically, the x-axis is a horizontal, the y-axis is vertical, and the one that gives depth is a z-axis. So what this shows is, it shows the current and the maximum acceleration of, along those three axes. Axes, axes. All right. So if I go this and I move it around, you have to look quick because it adjusts pretty quickly, but you can see that the current acceleration is moving. And I can go, for example, if I tilt it, only the y-axis changed. If I turn it this way, only one changes. And if I turn it this way, only the x changes. So it tells, it tells you the orientation. And then it updates the maximum. So let's take a minute. I'll pass it around, play with it. 
This doesn't do anything useful other than doing this, but we could then go and use this to um, do something with. Once we know the numbers there, we can, we can do something with it. So, let me pull this up. I don't know what unit those numbers are in, so um, maybe as we read it, um, we'll be able to tell. The other thing I've seen this used is, um, I forget what audio um, application. It might be like TuneIn or one of the radio ones. If you snap it, it will um, change the channel for you. So that could be potentially useful. All right. Let's look at the code and let's start looking at the manifest. And in the manifest are all the manif manifesty things that we're used to seeing. All right. There is one different thing, and I'm not sure if we've seen this at all um, in any other application. Um, and that is to give permission. Um, if any of you have an Android device, if you've just, uh, installed an application, it will oftentimes, the application will come up before it installs with a list of things that the application can do. All right? Um, connect to the network, for example. Um, access your contacts, for example. Access your camera. Those kinds of things. You need to put those permissions, if, you're, if your application has any, any um, involved permissions, you need to put it in a manifest. Because if, if you do not put it in a manifest and you try to use some functionality, it'll give you a, an error that says, hey, you didn't say that you were going to connect to the network, and yet you're trying to connect to the network. All right? So um, you need to give the permission so that the person that's Downloading and install it can't say, hey, look, you used up all my data downloading stuff. I didn't know you were going to connect to the network. Yes? Have I done any reading on the new version of the Android? Why don't you... Uh, oh, go ahead. Oh, to piecemeal block permissions? Yeah, the only thing wrong with that is if people block things... Yeah, it's going to break stuff. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, I mean, that's all well and good, but yeah. Um, yeah, I, I could, I could, in a way, I could see that. Um, but from our perspective, you have to give permissions to do uh, an action. And I'm not really sure what it uses Vibrate for, but we'll we'll take a look. I don't know. Um, pardon me. I don't know. Maybe it doesn't. All right, so that's the manifest. In the resources, we have our um, launcher um, icon. And there was a question about this, like if you create it, does it automatically create for you? And I don't think this version does, because I can go out and say... Reveal and Finder, and this is structured just like it was under um, Eclipse, where you have the where you have the different folders. It's just the GUI just renders it differently. So you have the drawable for all those and so on. All right, layout. Not really much of anything exciting here just a bunch of text views to display stuff. This does combine two linear layouts or maybe three. Contains uh, a linear layout um, for um, the top labels which show the maximum 
Then it has two, uh, and again, the linear layout for that, the overall is vertical. It then has two horizontal linear layouts uh, underneath it, one for the labels, one for the other thing. So if we're done looking at it. Let me grab it and show you what I mean. So the whole screen is a linear layout. which means that, and it's oriented vertically, which means that as we put these things down, those things get lined vertically. Contained within the vertical layout, though, are two horizontal layouts, and that's what gives it the current acceleration going across. All right. Not sure why they did it like that. It's kind of goofy, but oh well. That's what they did as long as we understand it. So if we look in the code, we see that um, uh, within the linear layout, we then have a couple nested linear layouts that are oriented horizontally. Or actually, oh, this is weird. It has three vertical linear layouts within Oh, okay. Each of these are vertical linear layouts. Believe it or not, they just stack them side by side. So I don't know. I don't know why they did it that way, but they did. All right. Looking in the values, nothing exciting here, just string constants. All right, let's look in the actual code. All right, and I'm going to pull this in to text edit so we can review the whole thing. Now we can almost guess, what do you expect to see? when we look at the code here. Pardon me? Interface. What do you mean an interface? Okay. Um, okay. Um, that's, a, that's a fair bet. It's possible that it wouldn't have that, but I think it does. All right. Well, n no. The slider. What? What do? What do all these gooey things have in common? They have listeners, right? So, the slider, buttons, text views, edit text views. All of them are going to have listeners associated with them. All right. And remember, there's a couple ways that we can implement listeners. One way is we can have our main activity implement the listener for the particular thing that we need a listener for. But as far as your statement of there being an interface, you wouldn't have to do it that way. We could define our own class that implemented that. Um, so yeah, I guess in that respect, we still would be implementing an interface. It just wouldn't be the main class that's doing it. But sure enough, when we look at this, we see that my activity implements sensor event listener. So what is that going to be? That's going to be the code that runs that notices when the thing moves. All right? It notices when it moves. So let's go and look and see what events we have associated with this. We'll scroll down, scroll down. It looks like we have on accuracy changed. On sensor changed and on vibrate.
Oh, no, I'm sorry, this is just vibrate. I'm guessing that these two are the methods that belong to the sensor event listener. And we can verify that if we want. two methods on accuracy changed and on sensor change. What does on accuracy change relate to? What does that mean? What does that mean on accuracy change? Well, let's take a look. We've probably seen in GPS applications or location applications where we have options as far as how precise it, it, um, it uh, gets a location. My guess is, even though I don't recall ever seeing this, that if we look here and go through this, we'll see an option for... Sensitivity, right. I believe so, yeah. In other words, how accurate is the movement? In other words, does it count that as a movement or does it count that as a movement? So let's... Well, it's, like, it's kind of like in Windows used to be able to do this anyhow. It's been 100 years since I used Windows regularly. But you have a, um, um, a um, essentially a, a pointer sensitivity. So you can make the pointer move slowly or you can make the pointer move quickly. We can display pointer trails, which has to be the most annoying thing you can possibly do. Ooh. Pardon me? Sure. And I guess this is it too. In other words, when you scroll the wheel, how many lines does it go? You can pick that as well. So it's similar to that. Let me look to see if I can find... Open settings, find motion. I think I had a motion. Not accessibility about this device. Developers option. Display. Not sure what. Settings motion, download G sensor. I don't see the setting on here, but apparently there is a setting for the sensitivity of that. And again, the, the whole idea of that is how much of a tilt is important to you. You know, um, If you have applications, for example, if you were playing Super Monkey Ball and you didn't have really good motor control, you might turn a little bit and boom, it falls off. So you might give yourself a little more slack in turning that. It doesn't look like this has the setting for it, but 
Um, it looks like there's apps that you could download to control that. Um, or newer Android devices might have a setting. Let me check my phone. Well, if you're writing the code, yes, you could. But if, if you're like using an application, yeah, that, that someone else wrote, then, then you really couldn't. Right. So yeah, absolutely. Um, and what this does is it allows you to re redo things if that changes. So if they're in the middle of playing your game, they recalibrate, you can then go and do the calculation. All right. Does this have it? I do not see it on this either. Both of these are fairly older devices. So I can sort of understand that. Okay, I guess newer versions would have the um, sensitivity. All right, the other event is on sensor change, and that means effectively when it moves a certain amount. How much of an amount? That depends on your sensitivity set, uh, setting. So, you know, we've gone full circle here, all right? The more sensitive it is, the more often this is going to be called, all right? And every time we move it, we clean out the current values, display the current values, display the maximum. All right? And it then goes and it does some calculations to figure out the absolute to give a change of the x, y, and z values in the accelerometer. If the change is below 2, it's just plain noise. This is to your point where we can code the sensitivity of it within our app as well. In other words, this ignores something if the um, change is small enough. All right? Whereas if the change was a lot, then it, re it, it, uh, it records it. And then we set the last known values of x, y, and z. And we look to see if the new values are greater than the maximum values and display those. All right. So we should, we notice a common theme in all these things. All right. And that's one good reason why it is um, good to go over a number of these different things. Because all these things have something like listeners or handlers or something like that which is code that's going to get fired off when a certain event happens. All right? And how do we handle that code? We can handle it one of a couple different ways. All right? One way that we could do it would be to um, do like we're doing here, where we implement the interface in our activity. Another thing that we could do is we could create our own object, either an anonymous class or an inner class, and implement that interface and put the code in there. I was thinking if we had time to go and add this functionality to something, because I think we could do it pretty quickly. something that we had? What's something that we did? What would shaking it do, though? Okay. I'm trying to think of what some of our other examples are. Favorite Twitter search. Let's pull that one up. Because what I'm thinking of doing is, is making it so that it deletes everything if you give it a good shake. So let's see if we can find that one. Open recent.
Okay, where am I? Up our good friend, a favorite Twitter search. I don't like that one. Let's try. Not liking me run this.
well, I guess we'll skip this. I'm sorry. Um, but essentially to do this, what we would do is we would go and we would implement sensor, sensor event listener and then put code in the sensor event listener that would do what we wanted it to do. Let me try to, oh no, that my Eclipse doesn't support this version of Java. Crap. All right. Um, I think what other things would, uh, if you want, if this is something you want to work on, um, again, you know, you could go in and add it to one of your test apps to, to try this and um, run, run code based on whether the accelerometer goes. Okay, so that's one thing. Second thing we want to look at is deploying. And let's look, because there's a nice guide here. And this is something I would suggest you all do, because it doesn't cost a lot. What does it cost? Like 25 bucks to be a, able to post to the, to the um, Android uh, Google Play Store? Deploying an Android app. Launch checklist. Is this the page that I want? Understand the publishing process. Understand Google Play policy and agreements. Test for quality. All right. where we want to start this. Look at preparing for release. There we go. All right. First thing that we have is, that we need, is we need the APK file. The APK file is a file that creates when we do a build. So we can see it here. If you're using Gradle, then it would be in the build APK folder. Okay, here we 
go. So there would be the um, APK file. It is listed as debug, I believe, because we have not like signed it for release. Okay, so that is the APK file there, and that contains everything. This we could, I could email this to me, and provided my um, device was set up so that it did not require getting things from the Google Play Store, I could just click on the file and email and install it. All right. Now, if you want to put it to the Google Play Store, though, there's a little bit more process that you have to go through. All right. One of the things that you need to do is you need to sign your application. And signing the application, what that does is that that certifies that the application is developed by who says has developed it. Android system requires each installed application be digitally signed with a certificate that is owned by the application developer. The Android system uses the certificate as a means of identifying the author. All right. Certificate to use for signing does not need to be signed by certificate authority. Authority. The Android system allows you to sign certificates with a self-signed certificate. To learn about certificate requirements, see this. All right. So. How do you sign the app? All right. In release mode, you sign your app with your own certificate. You create a key store and create a private key, then add the signing configuration to the build file for this. So, finding your app in Android Studio. On the menu bar, click generate. Ah, that's probably what we want to do. Build. The menu bar click build. That is not an option. I think I broke it when I tried to run the other one. Crap. Um, enabled the plugin, so how do I re enable those plugins? I'll tell you what, rather than agonizing um, going through this, this will be something that I will get together and do for next Tuesday. All right? So we will cover this. Any questions 
over this. What we need to do. Um, so next week I will at the very least talk about uh, building the application. And we could even go through the process of building one even if we don't uh, you know, actually deploy it to the store. We could deploy it to the store, you know, for laughs. Um, and uh, then we could go in and uh, look at maybe some other things like integrating with the camera or some other things. So, all right, questions? All right, that's all I had for today. <laughs>